Anytime you do zikr and alhamdulillah there's an energy in the zikr of Allah in the salawats and that energy it can be a jalali, it can be a, a fiery or jamali like a fragrant energy. It can be more of a harder energy that comes to clean. And there can be a, a softer, more fragrant energy that you would feel a, a softness in, in the energies that come into the heart. Depending upon what is needed or what the zikrs are being recited, if it comes in heavy and of a fiery nature to clean then of course you're going to feel a sharpness in the heart and it's coming in and cleaning. Cleaning that which is, is not good inside the heart or trying to come into the heart and taking the rust and, and the bad energy away. So it's going to have a, a pain, a sharpness and alhamdulillah if you can carry through that and keep doing the zikr, keep yourself always with wudu and have your taweez, keep the madad and the focus upon the shaykhs to be present with you then alhamdulillah should be just of a cleansing nature and they're going to be different types of energies. So what Jalali and Jamali, so majestic or beautific. If majestic light you feel like you're crushing. So there's a crushing and a releasing. So the contractions, every time Allah want to bring down something, clean it and then bring it back. So has to have a Jalali tajali, has to have a majestic tajali. So tonight in the beginning salawats were majestic, very hard crushing and images of battle. So those were very majestic. But because the energy is too heated then the, the beautific and jamali tajalis of those other nasheeds then soften the energy, soften the energy so that it's not so heated. But they're both required, one to come cleanse, crush and then to raise the servant. The beautific tajali after the crushing then brings a beautific like a rain upon the soul so that it's not a heated and they don't stay heated and enter into difficulty, inshaAllah. Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Forgive me for my ignorance. You're forgiven. Can you elaborate more on how to melt ourselves till we reach our <coughs> gaseous nature? It's good you're, you're asking from the, the duality of light. My son was asking from duality of light but because he's watching YouTube. Which, right, he said, why are you complaining about YouTube? You're on YouTube too. <laughs> Everything I'd answer. I said, no but YouTube you have to watch authorized people that they know the subject. But it's good that you're, you're watching that understanding that this duality of light and that reality of light is, is important, it's immense in, in this path and in this way its understanding, its practices and how to melt. So whether we talk about the three states of matter because you can't deny these teachings or everyone in school is ta taught about the duality of light and that light has particle and wave. But most people are living particle because they're under continuous observation and they want to be observed by nonsense people because of Instagram and TikTok. That's shaitan's plan that don't turn into a wave because if you become a wave you're very powerful. You connect into oceans of power that, that can't be imagined. So keep everybody to be a particle and not to, to go through that. Then also in science they teach you that every matter has three states. It's going to be solid or liquid and then gaseous which is then ethereal of an angelic nature. If your matter is solid you're rigid, your understanding is rigid and everything is like that. That doesn't make for good Sufis. So the Sufi has to be and move towards a liquid state, more patient, more calm, able to fit into every type of situation. 
you can take a shaykh into a big majlis of big shaykhs and he can talk to them or you can take him into a group of hippies who absolutely have no idea who he is, they took us to that New Mexico, <laughs> that bizarre place and you can teach them because you're, you're liquid, you're, you're not rigid and they melted you to a state in which to be just like water that if you pour water into anything it flows into it. And that was again when you want to understand a little bit about Shams and Rumi, that was understanding. Sayyidina Rumi Jalaluddin was a big scholar of Islam and external, he had taken an external path. And when it was Allah's destiny he wasn't a murid, he was a murad in which Allah had called upon him, he was being called. He said so then Sayyidina Shams al Tabriz was dispensed to him to go and collect him. And that was Shams al Tabriz, the names are iconic names meaning I'm the point of the sun that's most powerful. Means that that was a shaykh and all shaykhs are shams that are of a sun nature, narani their, their in, internal fire has been lit and their associations can begin to cook people whether they're present or at a distance and that to take them from their very solid state and begin to melt them. And when people first come to tariqah they're like a wet log, wet piece of wood that they think everything's fantastic, this is great, it's ecstatic, this is amazing, amazing because you're still wet. So you're not feeling the heat yet but when you sit for a while and keep continue to, to try to ascend then the energy becomes very fiery and a wooden log, dry log feels the flame immediately. They feel the difficulty, they feel the burning. They feel the agitation that if they sit in the presence of the shaykh the talks may agitate them and, and just you know they, they, they go back listen and oh that agitated me and because your, your nature now is drying and the heat is coming and you're going to catch fire. If they can burn you long enough in which you feel that mm, every time you listen you go out and you fight people, you get angry but you try to control, control, control. After the association put something sweet in your mouth to give your nafs a relief. So that was the sunnah they would pass dates on the association because everyone's nafs is going to be like you know on fire, you give them something sweet and, and pacify the beast. That's the, the hikmah of making it just be calm, calm down, calm down. And then if you can control that, control that you're able to move through the fire until the student becomes lit where they actually lit that log and they're continuously on fire means they have a, a sense of an internal heat, they heat up very strong and they control their anger, they control the, the, their bad characteristics and then they have a state in which they're lit, they heat up and that's that phase that if they light up long enough, more enough and continuously they become like a sun in which they remain continuously lit. And then they're taught on how to turn off and on so that you don't bother people all the time but when there's an association then there's a time to turn your energy on and when there's not an association then there's a time to turn the energy off for people not to feel it otherwise they can't keep the company of somebody like that. So it's a process of burning and, and following the teachings, doing the meditation, doing the awrad and the connections, alhamdulillah. So all that, it's all here, timeless reality. So if they have the book on the timeless reality it's like an encyclopedia. Imagine a day in which the internet doesn't work and these are like a reference guide that, what did he say? What was about the jinn? What was about the energy? How did I make the connection? That's why these things are coming out. These were always the end phase of tariqah that nobody knew about these except those whom were very, very advanced in all their practices. They're, so the last chapter is coming out first now. So they're bringing the end phase now because we're in the end game. Either people learn how to connect, how to make their connection to be safe through all of the difficulties, to get their coordinates, to get their understanding, to get their protection. All of that is required through the muraqabah, through the connection through their heart and to connect to these channels of light, inshaAllah. 
Assalamualaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa Sayyidi, what is the reality behind the 313 generals of Sayyidina Imam Mahdi alayhi salam? 313 generals of Sayyidina Mahdi salam. Alhamdulillah. There's good. There's 124,000 awliya and from these 124,000 there are 7,007 Naqshbandi and they are dressed by the secrets of Mawlana Shah Naqshband and each of them may have up to 12,000 secrets that Mawlana Shah Naqshband has given into their heart but most don't even have one on this earth. And those are the secrets of ilm huruf, muraqaba, tafakkur, uh, qalb, the levels of the heart, all of those. Those are from the Naqshbandi secrets given from Mawlana Shah Naqshband for the tariqah. Then from these 7,007 there's also a category of 313 and these 313 awliyaullah they inherit from the 313 messengers of Allah in which they inherit a tongue in which to deliver a message. All messages now are being delivered on behalf of Sayyidina Muhammad through the connection and the power of Imam Mahdi So they have a permission to speak and their reality of 313 that there's three points up, three points down and the one sultan upon their heart. So then these three points have to be opened for their upper triangle and the three points of their lower existence has to be under a discipline. As a result they can open up this Najm al-Dawood, Najm al-Sulaiman and the kingdom of Sulaiman was based on that reality that this is the Najm of Sayyidina Muhammad this was given as a as a gift to those nations but all treasures are owned by Sayyidina Muhammad So means they inherit from that reality and from that power of that Naj, of that star in which the whatever was understood by Sayyidina Sulaiman they have a Sulaimaniya reality on this earth. They have a very strong connection with the jinn kingdoms and the knowledges of the jinn world and that was Sayyidina Sulaiman's reality, bringing those realities from the permission Izzatullah, Izzat Rasul, Izzat al Mu'mineen. It's with their Izzat might that those realities enter onto the earth. They are the real custodians of the kingdom of Sulaiman Sayyidina Sulaiman the fake one or the masons, they wish they had the power of Sayyidina Sulaiman, they wish they understood the star and everything that they have done of mannerisms are blasphemous and satanic. And as a result shaitan gives his power to them. So they are the arch nemesis of the haqqaiq, they're the dark prince. Like Batman, <laughs> that's always shaitan does, he copies what's from the heaven. So because he convinced them that, look the power Sayyidina Sulaiman has, why do you guys don't have this power? How do we do it? Do like this, do like this, do like this, then they wear an apron. <laughs> so he think he wore this apron, he got power like that <laughs> because shaitan's playing with them. Now do like that, do like that, go like that, go like that, make the sign, that's not that power. That's a power from Allah that has to open the, th the points. Everyone has two pyramids, two triangles. They have to open up their upper reality and that has to bring the power of the soul, the zikr and all of these uh, teachings and they have to lower and control the lower parts of the body and the lower desires of dunya and that when that opens and that discipline is dressed upon them then Allah open upon their heart the kingdom of heavens, inshaAllah. That's very simplified fast understanding. But there are articles on Nur Muhammad on the 313, the star and the realities of a star and that's all the, the teachings inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Sayyidi, how long does it take for this wet log to dry out? Not too long.
depending upon this is a school in which you move at your own pace. So you come, you study, you read the articles, you tend the zikrs, you give the support, you share the links. As much as you're in it, you'll feel it. And the, the faster and the more you do, the more you feel it because everybody will come against you. Everything will be difficult, every type of problem will begin to, to manifest because that's the burning, that's the burning and that's, that's alhamdulillah because the struggle is, is for us and that is uh, the victory for Allah When the servant struggles in Allah's way then that's a, a victory because Allah is happy with the servant whom continuously struggling and, and, and going through what difficulties they have in life. At first you think it's a struggle but as you raise in your discipline it seems like the whole world is tumbling but you're still going perfectly great. So for you the world looks like a storm around you but your salamun hiya hatta na na salam Sayyidina Ibrahim qul ya nahrukuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim means so much difficulty is around that person but they have a coolness in this piece of difficulty because they're content with their Lord and Allah send for them the tajallis upon their heart and soul. So as it becomes difficult person, oh it's difficult, difficult but when they submit and taslim and open these realities then the outside world may look like that person's in a huge difficulty but for them it's very cool and peaceful. Because Allah is great, He gives the servant what they're in need of so that they can survive the difficulties and the testing, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As I would like to ask, during the burning testings, does our tummy get affected? It seems to get me a lot of tummy troubles with the agitation. Mm. That's going to the equator. <laughs> the equator of the body is the tummy and so Prophet described all difficulty for the believers in his tummy, right? Because all of your feet that carry your dunya energy, your dunya desires, all this dunya is always rising and the equator of your body is your belly button and all heavenly emanation is always dressing upon the heart. And this becomes your yin-yang, this becomes your continuous battle between the heavenly of what I have to do and then the dunya what it's trying to ask from me. So the stomach is then the meeting point. So stomach pain, back pain, those are the two. The stomach because all the energy is having a conflict within your belly no doubt. So all the dunya energy is coming in there making problem, all the heavenly anim, animation, anim, emanation, animation, emanations, all the heavenly lights are trying to dress us but shaitan's not leaving us alone. So that's the difficulty, that's the, the feet that smell because of the dunya energy of the earth. So that's all these are the signs of dunya energy that they make feet smell, why would feet smell? Uh, because they're walking on dunya, the dunya uh, desires entering within them. The body has nerve points on the feet that control all the body. So the shaitans and the bad energy that walk the earth, they're trying to send that energy up to overtake that insan, to overtake that human being. So there's a continuous battle for the lower. And that's why these spiritual practices, the taweezes, the mada, the, the, all the practices are meant to bring more energy to the soul, to the heart and then begin to push all the negative energy down. And then the eating and what you eat, the du'as that you eat, the, what you drink, the du'as upon what you drink so that to send an energy again into the stomach that becomes a, a peaceful energy, a cleansing and a shifa and a healing and also for the back so that the energy is brought down and that the clash is not so severe as to begin to hurt and bring pain onto the back. And that's why in dunya the biggest problems are stomach and back pain, there are entire clinics for that. 
and pain management all based on that because every human being is going through that battle and that, that becomes you know the great battle and that's why Prophet described all of these. That the, the battle for the believers in his belly and the shaitan is moving through his blood. That's why then the eat halal, eat with your du'as and be very careful what you eat, who you eat from, make sure that, the, that you're in wudu when you're eating so that everything that coming into you is a source of energy and not a source of difficulty and, and badness inshaAllah. And then the zikrs, the practices, the breathing and the energy because then that sends more energy than you have when you make your muraqabah that the fires of the shaykhs begin to send an energy. That energy that comes is then sufficient to, to cleanse and to push that negativity away and also teach you how to release the negativity through the muraqabah and through the meditation. And the madad comes to pull the burdens from the students inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. If our heart wants someone to take bayah and join tariqah but that person is not interested then what should we do? Then make du'a, ask Allah ask Prophet that please guide this person to tariqah and please open their hearts and uh, generally tariqah is, is, a, is a lonely path that you don't find everybody coming into it, these are exceptions. That you take the path and many people don't grow at the same time, they become jealous, they don't want to follow that way and you learn to coexist with people following your path and your path becomes something for yourself and personal. So instead of trying to have everybody come into the car they may not all come like that. So then you be strong enough in which to do your practices and continue and then be amongst people that are you know not wanting to do that then it becomes more an in individual path. It's not a collective path in which everybody will come with me, let's go because they say, I don't want that and sign up for that, I don't want that type of spirituality. And it has to be in their heart and a calling within their soul that they want to achieve that reality. So as you're achieving then you keep praying, Ya Rabbi guide them, guide them, guide them, inshaAllah their hearts open. And maybe in, at a later time in life people have an event or an incident that their hearts will be open. Many people who come to us for guidance, they weren't practicing tariqah but all of them tell you that their grandfather was. So, oh, I went all the time with my grandfather to the thicker, I went here with my relatives to this. So everyone's natural courses may break away from things but then inevitably they come back because it was burned into their nature, into their reality inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Is it okay to listen to your teachings but not involved with the tariqah? Sure, it's, it's okay to listen to, to the teachings and if, if you don't feel that you want to, to do the teachings then that's up to you, alhamdulillah. But inshaAllah that the heart opens and as a, a source of listening to it that you, you want to sort of enter into it and begin to practice it so that you can feel the benefit of the teachings, the energies and the practices. But yes, and if you're following other people and you're watching it and, and learning from it then alhamdulillah then you, you can learn from that too, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Ya Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam uh, Sayyidi, what is the reality of 19 as it is mentioned in uh, Surah 7430? We have appointed only stern angels as wardens of the fire and we have made their number only as a test. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, 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 <laughs> 19 has many realities and these are, you know, the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad awwal Awala khalqillah, the one whom Allah created first, he carries the reality of that one. And then he carries the reality of the nine khatam al nabi that I am the seal and the end of all messengers of Allah and that Prophet is a reality of 19. And 19 letters of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, 
And these are 19 letters of Ahlul Bayt, Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein and Muhammad that is all encompassing. So it means has a deep, deep reality into the Muhammadan reality and the opening of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and Walhamd that the flag of praise is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So the 19 we have articles on Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, we have articles on the reality of, of 19 and 1 and 9 and has a tremendous power. That's why this gate that they teach from is the reality of 9. Ishams al Arifin in this Bab al Marifa is from the power and the Sultanat of nine. So, Qur'an has a secret passage. For common people, they pass through 12 hijabs from Surah 1 to Surah 12. So, by Hajj, they're on Surah Al Yusuf, being dressed by the beatific reality of Surah Yusuf. Once Allah dressed them from that, if He takes them towards the way of Marifa, then they enter in from the power of 12 hijabs based on nine. Their first entryway will be Surat Al Tawbah. And that has no Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem because they have to enter this gate of forgiveness and uh, this way of maghfirah in which to sacrifice their bad character. So that it doesn't have Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, it's Bismillah Allahu Akbar, go in and Allah now is going to grant us a tawbah in which to take away our bad character. Then your next hijab will be at 18 because it's going to be 12 of the nines. You go to 18, Surah Al-Kaf, all the way to the last at the 12th hijab is Surah Kawthar. Because these are Kawthari shaykhs, Kawthari reality that they take these secret passageway to be dressed by Surat Al Kawthar and to be from the ocean of Prophet Wasallam's Kawthar realities. So, alhamdulillah, many, many different realities. It's on the nurmuhammad.com, their website, inshaAllah, that has all these teachings. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon. Wa salaamun al mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa, bi siri Surat al Fatiha.